Welcome back to the next part of the object learning. In this part, we'll talk about the third type of uh, object copying, which is clone. Now, when you talk about cloning, uh, object cloning is very simple. Now, now let's see how to clone this object. So initially, what we'll do is we'll remove all this extra part, uh, this one, and let's remove the comment also to make uh, make it look better. Okay, so now we have we have removed all the extra code. So what I want now, I want to create a new object, and simply I should be able to say here it's obj dot uh, clone. So in Java we have this function called as clone, right? But unfortunately, we don't have clone method which is defined. Can you see a clone method here? No, we don't have a clone method. We just have a two string method which will, which will print the string. Now question arise, okay, that means we have to define a clone method here. But hold on. By default, all the classes in Java uh, extends a class called as object. If you can see, if you go here on ABC, it extends object by default. So if I click on this object, if I go to this class object, if I just say, I want to go to that class object, so if I say object, in this object class, we should be able to find a method which is clone, which is clone, which is clone. Okay. So you can see we have a method called as clone. But unfortunately, this method clone is protected, which means uh, I cannot call a clone method of object class using uh, using object of ABC because it is protected. So you cannot call this. What if if I just go into my class and override that method? Yes, we can do that, right? I don't know if it's here. Okay, we can we can do that, right? But uh, let's let's try let's try. So if I say public, uh, it should return an object. Uh, this object type should be ABC, and uh, the method name is it's clone. Okay, and here we can just say uh, return it is super dot clone because we want to call a super method, right? Oh, the issue now. Okay. It should return. It should return an object. Okay, now it's cool. Okay, now it's cool. Now it says the the uh, this clone method might return an error. Now again, why we are calling this uh, super dot clone here is because we want to call this uh, this clone method of this of of, of this uh, object class, and that's why we have to specify uh, it's super dot clone. Right now, there, there is there is some chance that this clone will throw an error. Now, how to handle this error? It's very simple. We can just say it throws exception. Uh oh, it's it's not supporting. It's because when you go here, it says it throws clone not support exception, which means here. We cannot increase the scope of exception. We can decrease the scope, which means I have to specify it is clone not supported exception. Simple. So I have over it overrided that method, which is present in object class. Even we can just specify it is as override. So it's work right. So it that means we are overriding a clone method here. Uh, I think it should work now. If you go here, uh, it's still not working. All right. It says uh, clone is returning an object. We want ABC, so we have to say it is ABC. Uh oh, again a problem. It says since clone is throwing an error, we have to handle this error here. So again the same error which is thrown by a clone method, and bingo, it's working. Now everything is there are no errors. It should work now. Mm, object uh, this we have overrided the method clone. We have we have called that method clone. How to call super class method using a super keyword? Everything looks better. Okay. Now if I print obj one, it should give me value which is five and six, right? Mm, I think it should work. You think it should work? Okay. Let's see. Let's run this code. 
and get ready to see some output or some error. Oh, we are getting a error which is clone not supported exception. Now what this means? Now if you can focus here, oh where is that? Where is that? So, yeah. This object class where is the object class? So we have this object class and we have lots of methods, right? And one of the method we have we are using here is clone. But think about this. If by default, if your Java or your JVM allows everyone to clone the object, or just imagine you're creating a software which is a security software, and some hacker, he just uh, managed to create a clone of your instance. That instance will have a state. Let's imagine that state has information about using in password. And if you create a clone of it, you're hacked. Your software is hacked. That means Java, JVM says, no, we will, I will not allow you to create a clone of an object, provided you specify that you want to create a clone. That means whenever you create a whenever you create a class in Java, by default, its instance will not allow it or it, it, the, the instance are not allowed to be cloned. Now question arises how to allow, how to give permission. Now one of the way to give permission is by implementing a interface called as clonable. So if you implement your class with this clonable interface, that means you are allowed to clone an object now. And amazingly, this clonable interface, it has nothing, which means this is a marker interface. And marker interface are basically used for permission. Now, if you don't know what is marker interface, you can go back to my previous video where we have a concept of marker interface. It will, uh, again, we have two marker interface we have, we'll be using. When we, one is serializable and the second one is clonable we are using now. And now if I run this, and the output is this. So this is first object, this is second object. Now, is it a, a shallow copy or deep copy? Let's check. It looks like shallow copy because we are directly writing a, a object name here. But if you change the value of obj1, if I say obj1.j is equal to 8, the expected output here is 5, 8. If it is shallow copy, both will give you 5, 8. If it is deep copy, one should give you 5, 8, second, second should give you 5, 6. And if I run this, okay, so we can see 5, 8 and 5, 6. That means internally, it is going as deep copy and it looks like shallow copy. So that's the importance of object copying using shallow copy, deep copy and clonable. So thank you so much for watching and do subscribe for further videos.